In our first episode of testing the X68000Z, we went over the unit and some games to see how it fared. I really enjoyed making that episode, so I've decided to keep the ball rolling and test out some more games for the device. But before we do that, let's take a look at the recently announced X68000Z Product Edition. This is the new black unit that is being sold on Amazon Japan. This little beauty releases officially on September 28th and comes in a number of different packages, including one that comes with a matching black keyboard and mouse, and even one with a tiny 4.3 LCD monitor. All three packages will come with a Famicom-like gamepad that has two action buttons. There is also a new game pack that will be available soon, which contains the games Genocide and Phalanx by the developer Zoom. As you can imagine, these units are highly sought after and expensive, but so far, Amazon Japan will not be shipping these worldwide. This new release will be coming with the same hardware that powered the original X68000Z. Inside this little guy, it's powered by the Z7213 system on a chip that was also used in the Genesis Mini, the TurboGrafx Mini, and the Astro City Mini. It's a quad-core Cortex-A7 CPU paired with a Mali 400 GPU, 512 megabytes of RAM, and 512 megabytes of NAND storage. But enough about that, let's get right into testing out some games. Our first test subject is Capcom's Final Fight, and this one is a beauty top to bottom that runs and plays great on the Z here. You do get less enemies on the screen, but outside of that, the color and detail is shockingly accurate. For most of the important reasons, this is Final Fight as you loved it in the arcade. All three characters, all the stages, two-player co-op, and one kick-ass soundtrack. I played it quite a bit and ran into no issues that I would call problematic. The controllers I tried worked well, a combination of the Retrobit Genesis and Sega Saturn pads. I'll leave you with some gameplay so you can get a feel for how this one is handled. Of all the games I covered in this episode, I thought for sure Geograph Seal would be the one with problems. It uses polygons and released very late in the machine's life. Whatever magic the developers conjured up to program this surely wouldn't run on the X68000Z, right? Wrong, because from what I can tell, this ran and played just fine. I had no issues at all running around with my controller laying waste to all the bad guys in the area. I noticed no graphical glitches or sound issues to speak of either. And that's very good news because Geograph Seal is one heck of a fun game. If you have an X68000Z coming in September, this one is a must play. Cotton, Fantastic Night Dreams is a horizontal shoot 'em up from success. Think of this one as a companion to Konami's Parodius franchise. Or in short, it's a comical and lighthearted take on an otherwise serious genre. It was originally an arcade game that was done on Sega's own System 16 board. And the translation here was really impressive. It remains fast the entire way through and the sound and visuals are very close to the coin op. Fans will love the fact that the X68000Z not only plays it great, but as an added bonus, the keyboard LED effects are fully intact and working like a charm. As the music plays in the game, the LEDs blink in unison to the beat. It adds a bit of authenticity to the experience you just don't get on any other devices. New owners of the X68000Z would be wise to add this classic to their library. And be sure to pump up that volume. This game sounds fantastic. Ah! 
Alien Syndrome was an overhead running gun that Sega developed and released in the arcade for the System 16. It essentially takes its entire premise from the Aliens franchise. Rescue your shipmates from the alien scourge that infests your spacecraft. You need the weapons that are stored all over the ship because these things just never stop coming. Flamethrowers, lasers, and secondary options abound, and there is a map that you can follow that shows the captives' locations. The X68000Z does a bang up job here, and I had no issues running and gunning for a good number of levels. Even the massive boss encounters were spot on. This has the arcade 2 player co-op as well, so it makes an excellent addition to your X68000Z just for the multiplayer. Arcade ports like this made this platform special, and this one works just fine. Wolf Team developed Granada on the X68000 originally, and it's the version that is often considered the definitive way to play it. It's a top-down, free-roaming tank shooter that has you exploring, knocking out targets, and facing a boss to end the level. It looks like something Technosoft would have done, and the quality is close to their style as well. It has an opening cinematic not in Sega's version, and it has a much higher color count. It does run slower, however, and you'll feel it in how the tank moves around. It did seem to do fine on the X68000Z just the same. The control was spot on, and man that soundtrack just couldn't get any better. There's a lot of gameplay and challenge in this one, and since it seems to work fine, I highly recommend you add it to your X68000Z as soon as possible. There are few games on the X68000 as fun and as well made as 1991's Aqualus. This is a side-scrolling action platformer where you control a mech, outfitted with multiple weapon types, facing down countless enemies. The visuals are awesome with backgrounds that are loaded with multiple layers. Essentially, you are on an extermination mission, taking down everything around you. You can switch your arsenal at any time, and you have a grappling hook at your disposal to help you climb around the level. And you'll need it because there's lots of verticality to these areas. There is also an experience system in place to level up your stats, giving it an edge over the usual games you saw in the genre. This runs fantastic on the X68000Z, with no hiccups to speak of. Even if you just want to mess around with an X68000 emulator, Aqualus is one of those games you just gotta try. Cyvalion here is one of the weirdest games you'll see on the X68000. You control a dragon in maze-like levels trying to make your way to the end to face a boss. But the challenge is crazy high because the enemies only need to touch your body, anywhere on your body, to do massive damage to you. I have always been terrible at this game, but I try and try again because the concept is so unique. On the X68000Z, it runs and looks very similar to the arcade, which was originally done by Taito. This one I'll only recommend to those of you that love a challenge. It can be absolutely rage-inducing. Woo! <laughs> 
Bomberman on the X68000 was a proper port of the original Hudson Soft classic that appeared on the PC Engine in 1990. Most of you have played some version of this over the years, so it should be quite familiar. As Bomberman, your job is to go around maze-like levels and defeat enemies, who get harder as the game progresses. You have access to power-ups that give you bigger explosions and more bombs you can set at any given time. This runs excellent on the X68000Z, and I put in quite a few stages to make sure it stayed that way. Looks the part, has a great soundtrack, and plays exactly like it should. That versus mode is a blast too. It's also really easy to get into, so it's great fun for younger gamers. Bubble Bobble was another title classic the X68000 received, and it too runs great on the X68000Z. The goal here is to use your bubbles to capture enemies, smash them, and then collect the fruit they drop. It's actually pretty challenging and supports two players at the same time. This was extremely popular on a number of consoles back then, so I know there's a bunch of fans out there that would appreciate a great port of it. If you enjoyed this on the Sega Master System or the NES, you're gonna absolutely love it here. Since there was a new game pack announced from Zoom, I decided to give the included titles a whirl on the X68000Z to see how they ran. And as expected, they both fired up without a hitch. First we look at Phalanx, a horizontal shooter with very nice backgrounds and action that never lets up. I can see why this one was chosen as one of the new titles. It really does show off the hardware in a very positive light. I'm not so sure about Genocide, however. I've played this one a few times before, and the X68000Z doesn't seem to have any issues running it. I just don't understand the gameplay here. The enemies are damage sponges, and your shields last no time against them. The hit detection is god-awful, with you wildly swinging your blade and seemingly hitting nothing at all. I mean, you are running around in a giant mech. They could have at least made you feel powerful. This likely has its fans, but I feel they could have chosen a much better game than this. Like the first episode, I ran into some problems with a few titles you should be aware of. First, the X68000 Classic Mad Stalker Full Metal would not run on the X68000Z no matter what I tried. I also had an issue getting Thunderblade up and running, which seemed to error out on me despite trying multiple different images. And finally, there was Dragon Buster, the Archives Volume 7 entry that crashed the entire X68000Z system every time I tried to play it. If you are shooting for any of these to be in your X68000Z library, be prepared to wait for a future firmware upgrade before they are playable. I'd also like to mention that while in the middle of making this, the software was upgraded on the X68000Z, adding the feature of showing more files on the SD card, but otherwise, adding no improvements to the games I could not get to run. Even the issues I had with Thunder Force 2 in the first episode are still very much present. I'm actually looking forward to the September release of the product edition, because almost certainly it will be accompanied by a software update that is far more feature rich than the bare bones options it currently has. The X68000Z needs more support for different file types, more options for things like sound module expansion and six button controller support for the games that use them. In its current state, despite it being cool as hell, I do not believe this is a user friendly device at all. You might want to keep that in mind should you have any interest. Even if you snag one at retail, it is still significantly more expensive than most other mini devices. There is a world of potential here, but it still has a way to go before it reaches it. I'm Sega Lord X, 
Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.